Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fyler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the weekly evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 2nd and the 9th of September 2017. So we have a dissonance in energy this week happening in the celestial dome above our heads. On the one hand, we have a feeling with a lot of Piscean energy that all we want to do is disconnect from reality and flow on our, in our mind's eye on the wings of our imagination into the land of the muses and the land of fantasy and, and, and remain there passively and just be cradled within that universal womb without really needing to do anything or exert our power or defend ourselves or anything like that. This is about being cradled by the universe and being at one with the universe. A very spiritual, a very artistic, a very um, subtle influence that can really help us talk to the muses and take out our creativity and our spirituality. But we can all feel like we're astronauts. We can feel totally disattached from time and space and from this race that we call modern life. We could be much more vulnerable and much more um, emotional during this week. On the other hand, there's a heightening of energy and an exacting of energy. So what we really have here, on the one hand is Piscean energy, on the other is the other axis, is the other pole. It's Virgo energy coming in. So how much do we give in into that passivity and spirituality and subtle feminine energy and on the other hand how much do we put our hands on on things and we look at the imperfections and we aim to fix them through continual effort Virgo and how much of it has importance that is greater for us greater for the whole greater for the world greater for society greater for nature and animals this is the whole axis of Virgo Pisces so Mercury is still conjunct Mars during the first half of the week. So just pay attention to whatever and however you speak uh, to your uh, fellow men around you. Because we can blurb out things that we would be later sorry for. We could be less tactful. We could be less sensitive. We could heat up verbally too fast. So just be careful with that. We have the moon. I'm sorry. We have the sun opposing Neptune. That would be at its height on the 5th of September. But this really heightens that feeling that we are all disconnected, that we're flowing in space, that all we want to do is sleep and dream and be passive and, and just enjoy nature and enjoy the simplicity of life and reconnect with others on grounds of that communality. We all drink the same water, we all eat the same food, we all live and reside on the same planet. We breathe the same air. We all want happiness and joy in our life. And, 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 and we can really connect with others on the grounds of these similarities. It's all about simplicity, the simple things in life. But after the 5th of September, that dissipates. Um, and heightens again in the full moon. We'll be there in a second. So... So it's not the 5th, it's the 6th, okay? After the 6th, this dissipates, not the 5th. On the 5th, Mercury that was retrograding for the past three weeks goes direct. So all our charting, our course through life and our mental capacities, the way we input and output our information, the way we communicate, is all slowly getting better. Remember that we can feel the Mercury retrograde the most when it stops and starts going forward again. So it takes some time until the, the planet picks up speed and all the mercurial subjects start working properly again. So from the 6th or the 7th, things are going to be a little easier regarding that. We have the full moon in Pisces. On the 6th, not only in Pisces, conjunct, very, very conjunct Neptune. So that Piscean energy is just festive right now. It's like 
heightened very, 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 very much. And what it is all about? It's about turning inside. It's about understanding that the answers we seek are within us and not within our masculine part, but within our feminine part. Not with our tongues who can speak, that can speak, but with our ears that can listen. It's about letting those subtle energies create this emotional process of maturing, emotional process of um, digestion of everything that has happened in the last couple of months. It's about emotions and it's about understanding that right now we need to take a slower pace, that we need to let that emotional pregnancy take place. And that if we want that child to actually breathe on its own and grow up and live, we need to give it that time. We cannot haste our pace. We need to take it slower and remain calmer and do things more minutely, more subtly, subtly. And it's about understanding where is the border between the need to slow down and become more passive and understand that there are greater mechanisms that we're not in charge of, that we're not in control of, and that we cannot foresee even, that are part of this oceanic current that we're all swimming in in this universe. And when do we need to let go and relax and float with that current instead of having that assertion with a hands-on experience of putting in continual effort, Virgo, to work on imperfections and get a better outcome, Virgo. So we have that Pisces-Virgo axis. And we're not, it's not about being in one pole and it's not in, about being in the other. It's only because we see these two extremes that we can build that pyramid and become the eye on top of it that sees everything from above. It's not about being in the middle, it's about being a lot above the middle, like the eye on top of the pyramid, only because it has those wide uh, extremes that make it so stable. So when do we need to put in effort? When do we need to look at the little imperfections and work on them? maybe even for the betterment of our world and society, Pisces, animals and nature, Virgo, and give service. And how do we give service without canceling ourselves out and becoming martyrs and sacrificing our own needs and desires? So this is what this full moon is about. This is what this conjuncting to Neptune is about. And we can be so sensitive and we could be so vulnerable. We're like energetic and emotional sponges during this week. That means that we need to make sure that we pick a little Virgo up and spread it around our surroundings. And Virgo is all about cleaning, amending, and fixing things, and making sure that they are clean and sanitized and healthy. That means that we could be a little bit too sensitive and, and we want to run away to that imaginary world, we could be either too dependent on other people or bring into our aura, into our garden, people who are too dependent on us that really should not come in our gates. And we need to be more Virgo-like and not leave that gate wide open. So not only could we be more dependent or people could be more dependent on us, we could want to run away from this reality or bring in people that run away from their reality using substances like alcohol or drugs and we need to watch it ourselves as well during this week. So we need to see how healthy the people around us are. Because we are such energetic sponges and emotional sponges, we could feel that affects how, how this affects us. And 
when our surroundings are not sanitized enough, are not clean enough, are not healthy enough, we will be influenced. So it's about making sure that everyone around us has a healthy influence on us. Our relationships in work, our friends, our love relationship. Are there patterns there that influence us in a negative manner that we can actually fix now? And as I said, it's a very spiritual and um, creative time emotionally, uh, 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 artistically, if we utilize this, this energy towards that. On September 7th, we have the Moon in Pisces conjunct Chiron. This is a great time for healing, especially in things connected with family, mothering, children, home. But this is also a time that we are very sensitive. We can touch our own pains and aches. And if you do that, please do it with a loving hand, with a caring hand, with a gentle hand. It's the only way we can heal and not create further pains and aches. On September 8th, we have the moon in Aries square Pluto. Ho ho ho, energetic day. A bit too feisty for, for my liking. And very masculine within this feminine week. So just be careful. Don't let the fire come up too high. Don't let your masculine uh, part uh, get the best of you. And stay away from be being obsessive or too total of um, actually... Um, being carried away by the drama of the moment and finding yourself in rage or in anger and getting into power struggles that are not necessary so just step away from yourself one step or two and look on the situation from above and be more logical than you usually are on the 8th on the 9th we have Mercury re-entering Virgo this time in a direct action oops did you see that cattail passing us by? That was Georgia. Yes, Georgia, your star. Or at least your 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 tail is. You want to say hello? Hello. So this is Georgia. Hello, Georgia. Oh. oh, yes. So Mercury is turning direct, and it's going back into Virgo in the ninth, and that would make our moving forward in life, our navigation, our communication, and all our mental capacities, the way we input and output information much more exact. We'll be able to see the imperfections, we'll be able to be more, um, oof, I have cat, cat hair in my nose, that's fun, you should try it sometime. <laughs> ah, sorry. Anyway, so, it makes us much more um, in charge of our own life and of our moving forward in life. And of course, as Mercury will progress into Virgo, this would heighten and get stronger. So that's actually a beautiful uh, uh, influence that I love. And of course, Mercury rules Virgo, so it's very strong there. And we could feel how all the mercurial subjects are falling back into the right pace. UP, this is about everything I had to say for this week, and I want to thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoy these messages, and I would love to hear your remarks about that and what you think. I could do maybe a little better. So comments are appreciated. Sharing is very much appreciated as well. And of course, for private lessons, for courses, lectures, and any kind of event regarding astrology, I would love to hear from you. And of course, if you have any questions, you can contact me as well. I'm Boaz Feiler, and I'm signing off. Have a beautiful week. Bye-bye.